Now, during the summers that year, 2008, Iowa received so much rain, it was flooding out crops. So that was very fortunate for me because as late as our start was, farmers had planted a second round, which was unusual for the area. So the corn really played right into it. But you get the good with the bad, and the bad was Iowa was having the worst rains that they've ever had that year. Now, when I, when I pulled the Farmer's Almanac out and I looked for the history of Iowa rains, for the first time, on location, three weeks from shooting, I wanted to commit seppuku. I'm, I'm looking at an average of 50% rain during my four-week shoot. My shoot takes place, I, I need anywhere from 18 to 24 days, and 20 makes the most sense to me. And it's going to rain for 10 of the days minimum. Just law of averages. Any way you cut it on my 20-day board, I have three days of interior and 17 days outside. So just, just take averages, and I'm going to lose seven days of shooting right off the top because of rain. So I, I do an exploration with the art director, Andrew Hussey, to try and figure out what would it take for me to go into one of these facilities that has been abandoned by somebody who started a business and couldn't make a run of it, so there's this big empty space, and put in corn and shoot all the corn fields inside. And I said, that wouldn't be so bad with kids anyway. We can control everything. And he runs the numbers for me, and, and that would be half of our budget. He said, that's not going to work. So I said, what, what, what if I, and I bring the DP, Jamie Thompson and Andrew Hussey together, and I say, what if I build huge caravans and I put these tents over massive expanses of cornfields? I said, you know, when, James, when, when John Alcott shot Beastmaster, he always had 20 by 20 scrims everywhere. You know, we were, we were blocking light with 20 by 20s. What if I overthink the 20 by 20 idea and you're going to hear the rain hitting whatever we put up there. Um, it's, the, the, the winds are fiercer than you think. It's going to blow everything down. It, this is even worse than your last idea. I, this film can't be made, can it? I'm going to have to crash the movie. I mean, it can't be made. It, it can't be made. And then I go to sleep with this terrible thought of waking up the next day and having to tell my boss that we're three weeks away from shooting and for the first time I faced a question I can't answer. Hmm. And I just woke up with the answer. Five over seven. Everybody who works on location works six day work weeks and the reason they do is because they're trying to make a deal on the equipment and on the, on the uh, per diem. See, if you have somebody on location it's the cost of their per diem, the cost of their hotel room, and the cost of the equipment that makes you want to shoot a sixth day. Now, I, I'm old enough, and I've done enough movies in my life to know that you work six-day weeks, people burn out. And the productivity you get on, this, on the fourth week of a six-day week shoot is nowhere near the productivity you got on the first three days. And that's completely different when you work a five-day week. So I'm thinking, my per diems are quite small. I'm only paying people about less than $40 a day for per diem. So if you took the whole company, it's you know 50 people times 40 bucks, $2,000. So if I shoot five day weeks, I can get a 20 day schedule in in four weeks. I'd have to have a four-week rental for the equipment anyway. There's no particular cost there. But I'm going to get killed on the housing. So what I'll do is I haven't hired anybody yet. I'll make it a point to only hire people who are not department heads who are willing to double up like I did on the howling, like Mike Fennell taught me. Treat it like a low budget because it is a low budget. So the doubling up, which wasn't the original plan, will create a savings then that will offset the fallow per diem days. And I'm not going to come out behind on this. I'm going to have a more well-rested crew because they have five days off instead of seven. And the reason I call it five over seven is I'm going to now go back and explain to the unions who I, I'm going to be in business with, if any, that I really didn't say that right. Let me start over. I'm going to go back and I'm going to explain to all the crew people who come onto the show that they're going to be working a five-day week, but... 
they're not going to have the same two days off in a row. And they might hit a situation where the five days on week one go right into the five days on week two, and they might hit a period where they have two days off, 10, 10 days on, and then two days off. And I won't know any of it because the only time I'm ever going to call the day off is at wrap. Because when we see that we're facing huge weather problems with rain that are guaranteed to hit us tomorrow, at wrap is when we're going to make decisions to say tomorrow is your day off. But what's in it for you is you're going to be one of the only people in motion picture history that ever go on location and work a five-day week on location. So it's a win-win. Everybody, everybody comes out.